Okay, I have a confession to make. I've been delaying this Crippitz for a while, and that's because we're talking about dopamine. It's not that I hate dopamine. Well, actually, I do hate dopamine. I hardly ever use it, but I still have to tell you about it so that you know that it's available and the reasons, albeit few, where you'd use dopamine as your vasopressor. But before I go on, I was looking at the analytics on YouTube and I noticed that many of you, in fact, most of you who watch these videos are not subscribers. Why haven't you subscribed? this is a great channel. Go hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified when these videos are released. And while you're at it, why don't you drop a comment and let me know what you think about this video. Anyway, back to the crit bits. Dopamine works on a variety of receptors. It works on the D1 receptors, it works on the beta 1 receptors, and it works on the alpha receptors. And depending on the doses you give your patients, it's going to work on these receptors differently. You remember beta 1, that's more of an inotropic dose, and that works on the heart, and alpha works on the periphery, and alpha works on peripheral tissues. D1 receptors are primarily in the renal vasculature, the mesenteric vasculature, cerebral, and coronary beds. So they're kind of all over the place. As you increase your dose of dopamine, you're going to get more of these effects. Effects. So in doses of 1 to 5 mics per kilogram per minute, you're going to be getting more of a dopaminergic effect. In the 5 to 10 range, you're going to get more of a beta effect. And then greater than 10, you're going to get mostly an alpha effect. Obviously, this is what happens in the research lab. In real life, it varies considerably. Anytime we speak about dopamine, we have to dispel this myth. Renal dose dopamine. This is something that is still in the textbooks and has been debunked now in the literature. What's renal dose dopamine? It's a thought by using a low dose of dopamine, you're going to increase renal perfusion because remember, they're D1 receptors in the renal arteries, and you will increase perfusion and make the kidneys better. And this is thought to be helpful when you have someone whose urine output's dropping or their creatinine is rising. This has been looked at, and there's no such thing as a renal dose dopamine. Likely what's happening is there's an increase in cardiac output as a result of the dopamine being infused, which has better forward perfusion and gets the kidneys perfusing better. So what that means is it's not necessarily the dopamine that's improving renal perfusion, it's the ionotropic effect, and that being said, there are much better drugs that you can use to increase perfusion of the kidneys. So just know this myth is out there, but it's been well debunked and you can move on past it. Let's talk a little more about dopamine and why I hardly ever use it. When I look at my menu of vasopressors, I will always start with norepinephrine first, followed by vasopressin. I would consider epinephrine, and then I would consider phenylephrine, and then all the way at the bottom is dopamine. Now I know what you're asking, Haney, why are you so down on dopamine? I'll link to a few articles in the show notes, but suffice to say that there have been studies and meta-analyses that show that dopamine is no better than norepinephrine. In some studies, there's been no difference in mortality, while there's been an increase in arrhythmias. So if there's no difference in mortality, and there are more complications, why would you pick dopamine? A meta-analysis, which will also be linked in the show notes, shows that dopamine actually increases mortality in septic patients as compared to norepinephrine. So there's another reason why I would pick norepinephrine over dopamine. Well, surely with this data and the fact that there's no renal dose dopamine, you might be asking, why don't we just get rid of the drug altogether? And I almost agree, except for the fact that there's one indication to use dopamine. You might consider using dopamine for patients who have symptomatic bradycardia. In other words, we're going to use that beta potential of the drug to help us with patients who are hypotensive and have bradycardia. That might be the only indication to use this drug. If you really want to dig deep and find another indication, if you happen to do echo and you find that the person has decrease in anotropy and they have bradycardia, you might go with dopamine before you use norepinephrine. The reason being is that dopamine has more of a beta effect at the same dose than norepinephrine does. I would start an anotrope and a vasopressor such as norepinephrine. However, this might be an indication for dopamine. So the bottom line is you have many, many choices that are far greater than dopamine. There's no such thing as renal dopamine, and the only indication is to use it in someone with symptomatic bradycardia. Oh yeah, there's one more thing. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. But in all seriousness, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching Crit Bits. I love making these videos for you, and the comments have been so positive. Thank you all. Stay awesome.